How did Carr find out about that loan? I don't know. I might have known that scheme of yours, having saved four thousand dollars in a tin box, would backfire. It was John Phillips's idea. I took your advice. I testified in front of a grand jury. Carr tricks me. Prove I lied to the jury or I lied to the bank. Well, either way, you're stuck with a lie. Which one will do you the least damage? Bank statement, I suppose. I admit that one. I might bluff my way through the tin box story. The jury wouldn't believe me. They couldn't prove by my testimony I got $4,000 from Philip. I still think that John will find some way out for you, if he thinks that you'll go to Carr with the whole story. Oh, I threatened him with that already. As a matter of fact, Peter, you could go to Carr and work out some way of exchanging information for immunity. No, 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 I can't do that, I can't. Well, perhaps I could spell it out to John and make him understand how desperate... No, no, positively no! No, he, there, there's nothing we can do. He flatly refused to help me. Now he's ruthless, I'm telling you, he's ruthless! Peter, what has John said that's frightened you so much? Has he any evidence against you of a crime? The only wrong thing I did was just tell him. Tell him my car accused me of being bribed by Mitchell. As soon as I said it, I saw the gleam in his eye. It's just an hour or so and it's since I said it, but by now he could have called Mitchell and ordered him to confess to the grand jury that I took a bribe of $4,000. Drop the indictment against him. But how can he persuade Mitchell to put himself back into trouble again? Oh, he has a way of uh, getting people to do what he wants. Well, anyway, you're supposed to appear before the grand jury again tomorrow morning. Well, I just... I just say that I'm too ill to appear. <laughs> you can't stall forever. You give me more time, though. Well, what will you do with it? I mean, sooner or later, Carl, have you back on the stand. What will you say? Nothing! Nothing! I've... I just refuse to testify. I refuse to incriminate myself. Well, then you may as well plead guilty and have done with it. Oh, the result will be the same, but at least it won't be I that incriminates Philip. Oh, Peter. You're not only a fool and a liar, but a coward. I love children. I really do. All children. Except Ronnie, Mickey, Alfred, George, Ruthie, Vivian, and Roxanne. <laughs> Were they all bad? No, honey, not bad. Just children. <laughs> Squirmy, talky, wiggly children. What are you doing, writing your memoirs? No, a letter to Uncle Matt. Mm. Telling him he's about to get out? No, I don't dare write too much because he's been through all the mail at the state prison, but I wanted to let him know that I'd quit my job. I wish I could see him, but I guess that isn't the place. Really out of the woods now, huh? Oh, yes. I told Barber goodbye forever. No more snooping for gangsters and hoodlums. In a few days, Lloyd will have, have the Gulf City Tribune deal all set. And I'll be off. Oh. One or two weeks of my second honeymoon and then the fresh start on my own newspaper. <laughs> oh, pardon me, correction. Our own newspaper. Lloyd only gave me half. <laughs> oh, I'll miss you, Janie. I'll miss you, Dottie. <clears throat> hello. Uh, hello, Janie. Ted. Oh, hi, Ted. Hi. This... I'm boss. Uh, Ex boss. Jane, I'm I'm sorry to bother you. I, I know you must be busy packing and everything, but I need some information from you. Well, what information do you need, Ted? Well, it's not for me. It's for personnel uh, for your severance pay. Personnel for severance. Yeah, well, you know, how old you are, all that sort of thing. Well, I gave you all that information when I took the job in the news. I gave it to Mr. Lambert. Well, he may have it in his desk, but he's, he's away on vacation, and personnel is flipping up there. <laughs> oh, all right. Listen, I'm going to be uptown. Can I drop in and get the information from you? Well, no, I'm going out in a few minutes. You can come by later this afternoon if you want to. Well, maybe I can persuade you to change your mind about quitting, huh? No, I haven't changed my mind, and I won't. Well, you can't blame me for trying. Bye now. Bye. Personnel wants to know when I was born. <laughs> 
so I can get paid off. Are you going to tell them? Oh, why not? Why should I belie the ravages of time? I found another gray hair this morning. Oh, honey, that's not time. That's the life you lead. <laughs> well, I'll reform. <laughs> I'm going out to mail Uncle Mac's letter and do a little shopping. Oh, I have some work to do, too. Papers to correct. Well, you had better get with it. You look to me like you were about to fall on your face. I have fell. Roxanne wore me out. Uh oh. Bye bye. Bye. Don't find the solution to your problem in a bottle. Coward, am I? I've fought for you with John Phillips all I can. You're not even man enough to fight your own battles. I worked very hard to get to where I am. But no, you, you wanted to go too high, too fast. You couldn't be satisfied being a wife of a district attorney. You had to have a mink coat. And the mink coat had to have a new car, so you got the most expensive kinds you could get. And the car had to have a fancy garage and a fancy mansion to go with it. Well, I didn't expect you to get the money differently. You didn't care where I got it from. After you're kicked out of office, I suppose you expect me to give up all that. Well, I don't intend to. Oh, that's why you wanted it in my name. In your name. Now that you discredited me, ruined me, I suppose you're going to leave me. Only as a last resort, Peter. see me, Bryce, because there is to be a change in the editorial policy of the news. Well, Ollie told me that you wanted me to drop a series of articles on Peter Dalton, building him up for a better job. Is that right, Mr. Phillips? Well, more than that. I want the news to climb down off the Dalton bandwagon before it becomes known that he's in trouble. Oh, you mean the uh, grand jury and car and all that? It's enough for you to know that I would like to have a series of editorials. Giving no information whatsoever, but with all the innuendos your writers can muster pointing out our need for impeccable integrity in law enforcement. I think I get it, Mr. Phillips. Uh, do we mention Dalton by name? No, but the implication must be unmistakable. So that when the news breaks, the paper will have clean skirts. No sooner said than done. Oh, just a minute. There is something else. You and Oliver Barber are good friends, aren't you? Well, I, uh, I see him once in a while. What's wrong with Oliver? Wrong? Well, I, I think I know what you're getting at, Mr. Phillips. I think I know exactly what's wrong with him, but well, I feel kind of strange carrying tales about someone who's been so close to you. I understand the delicacy of your position, but we're both friends of Oliver's. We want to help him. So tell me. In confidence, of course. What's wrong with Oliver? Well, uh, one way of looking at it, nothing. Oh, come, come. But looking at it another way, quite a lot. You see, Ollie never really fell for a woman before. A woman? Yeah. Well, of course, to most of us, there's a first time, and... Well, it's been a little rough on Ollie. He's taken it awfully hard. I always thought Oliver had depth at extricating himself from complications of that sort. Well, this is, uh, this is different, Mr. Phillips. You see, the girl is out of his class. She's a lady. It's a new experience for Ollie, and it's kind of got him unbalanced. Dangerously so? Well, I have no way of knowing that. Who is she? She's a reporter on the news, a good one. Jane Conway. Conway. Isn't that the woman he thought asked too many questions? Yeah, well, Ollie checked her out. As a matter of fact, we both did. She's all right. I would trust her with the keys to Fort Knox. Well, I would consider that a more reliable recommendation if you own the gold in Fort Knox. 
Well, Lambert thinks her references are Class A. And that's all you know about her? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Always tell me the truth, Bryce. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to see her this afternoon to fill out a file card for the personnel department. She's worked for the news for a year, and you haven't a report on her. Well, it isn't quite like it sounds. You see, Lambert hired her. And the, the report never got down to the personnel office. That's all. He probably has it in his desk, but he's on vacation. Doesn't it strike you as odd that there is no report on her? Well, not particular. Lambert never was one for system. Funny thing, though. It's only when she's quitting her job that the personnel department gets around to missing it. She's quitting her job? Well, reporters come and go. Yeah, well, I want to know why this one came and why she's going. Oliver Barber is a very important man in this organization. Now, if he's in trouble, we want to help him. But in order to prescribe something to bring down his fever, we have to know how serious the illness is. I'll find out. And the quicker the better. I'll check back with you this afternoon. He may be sicker than we think. Don't worry about Jane Conway, Mr. Phillips. <laughs> I don't like your attitude. I am not going to talk to you anymore when you've had so much to oh, drink. Good. Now, you keep quiet for the first time in your life and you listen to me. Peter, let go of my arm. I've been doing a lot of thinking since I got out of that grand jury this morning. It's a pity you didn't do some before you went in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You and John Phillips are doing my thinking for me. If we mean that you mean that we try to build you up, yes. Build me up? You destroyed me. He for his own protection and you, you for your glorification. I've been pulled around as though I had a ring through my nose. And now that I'm in trouble, you both desert me. You stay here, I am finished with you! Hi, sweetheart. Oh, it's you. How's my favorite girlfriend? There's nobody here by that name. Did I wake you? Oh, not really. I was just relaxing. Oh, well, Jane was expecting me. I know. I was here when you called. She's not back yet. Do uh, you mind if I wait? Oh, help yourself. Pick a drink if you like. No, no, thanks. Ooh. Say, uh, now that uh, Jane is leaving town, maybe you and I could have dinner together sometime, huh? Well, it's not very flattering being a man's second choice, but I hardly ever refuse a dinner engagement. Hardly ever. When is Jane leaving? Well, probably soon as she gets her pay from you. You know, I hate to lose her. Where's she going? Well, I don't think she's decided yet. Just the way. Just wants to get away from it all, huh? Mm. Wild blue yonder, she says. We should get back now. I've got another appointment. Mm. Gee, I've got some work to do, too. You know, newspaper people may work from sun to sun, but a school teacher's job is never done. <laughs> Do you mind if I start now that you've disturbed my nap? No, be my guest. Mm. Then maybe I can just leave this thing here and she can fill it out, huh? What is it? Well, you know, personnel file card. Oh, that information you wanted. Yeah, just so she can get her severance pay. It's just a formality. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, you've known her a long time. Maybe you can help her out. Sure, she said she didn't m care if you knew how old she was. <laughs> okay, good. Well, let's see, yeah. Uh, Jane Conway. Um, a middle name? Nope. No middle name. Uh, date of birth? Oh, uh, let's see. Must be July 5th, because I know it isn't the 4th, and she is 30, so you figure it out. July 5th, uh, 30, 20, 1928. Place of birth? Oh, a little town in Kansas. You never heard of it. Well, it must have a name. Afton. Afton, Kansas. The uh, identification, I know the hair and eyes, all that. I got that. Uh, scars or birthmarks? Well, no scars, but you just have a birthmark. You say, isn't this getting a little personal? Where is it? Her left shoulder blade. It shows when she wears an evening dress. Okay. Now, why would a girl write a composition on how to catch a frog? <laughs> uh, education? Uh, Afton High School, uh -huh. Northeastern School wait Journalism. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Afton High, Northeastern Journalism, right? Uh huh. Okay, married? What? Married. No. no. Parents living? Nope. No. Next of kin? None. None. 
Hey, wait a minute. Didn't she tell me last week she had a, a muse, a cousin or something that came to town? Oh, that guy. Oh, well, he just sort of blew in and blew right out again. You know, it, he's, he's not really a cousin. He's sort of the son of a distant uncle of Jane's, you know. Oh, he, right, never, never mind. No next of kin. It's not important. Uh, former places of employment. Oh, newspapers all over. Well, I better name a few. Um, New York Times. Times. Chicago Trib. Trib. Kansas City Star. Denver Post. Denver Post. That ought to do it. Yes, enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess that does it. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Listen, tell Jenny I'm sorry I, I missed her. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, by the way, uh, don't forget that dinner, huh? Dinner? When? I'll call you. Bye. You ungrateful false lusher, you pompous windbag. If I hadn't dead you, you'd still be nothing but a two-cent errand boy in somebody's law office. Listen to me, you wouldn't have been in this trouble. Believe me now, I'm gonna... You, it would serve you right. If you were a man, you'd have asked John Phillips what to say instead of telling him. Now, if you, I'm, if you had any sense, you'd go to my car and tell him what a fool you'd made of yourself. If you don't, perhaps I shall. Oh, Virginia, Virginia, don't, don't! Tell him that I, I did it to expose them. He wouldn't believe me, but maybe, maybe it's some good to the voters. Yeah, it's some good publicity. <laughs> I wouldn't live that long. That's what Philip said. You value your life, he said. The Edge of Night, created by Irving Vendy.